Well, it is, uh, thank you so much. It is such a delight to be part of this community. I'm a cell biologist. I was born in Padua, Italy, where I carried out most of my scientific career. Now they say that it is the people you meet and the bonds you make and what you create together with these people, right? That ultimately defines who you are. I think it's very true in my case. To start, my parents cultivated the love for freedom and the sense that you need to fight for what you think is right. Then I was lucky enough to meet my wife, Sandra, as an undergrad, and she has been a constant supporter. And together we made our best experiments, that is our two kids, Jessica and Giorgio, and of course, an ongoing experiment, of course. Now, during my PhD, I worked with Giorgio Bressan on biochemistry of the extracellular matrix, now, which is a mesh of filaments to which cells attach. In Giorgio, I admire the skeptical thinking and the interest in questions more than in results sometimes. Now, the lab at that time was in an old building, and uh, the building that uh, change history of medicine centuries earlier, where Giovanni Battista Morgani had put forward in a Copernican revolution, that is pathology. Pathology was the first objective-based medicine. And what he wrote is that the nature of disease must be searched in, quoting, the lines and volumes of organs, normal and abnormal. And it is interesting, amusing, uh, uh, obviously unconsciously in insights that I kept returning to the same idea of shape, the three-dimensional organization of cells and organs is intrinsic to their physiology that means to function. Then for postdoc, I decided to move to a new field and in particularly on the core mechanism of life, which is how an individual, new individual develop from a fertilized egg. And for this, I joined a leader of this topic that is Professor Eddie De Robertis at the HHMI in UCLA. And it is a double treat, of course, for me to be here today that we sit together in this virtual room. Those in California has been fantastic four years that changed me entirely. And Eddie teaches you by giving the example with a whatever it takes perspective and philosophy that somehow is able to pull the best out of you. But the main gift I received from him was confidence. Confidence that the status quo can be challenged by pursuing daring goals, even if people think that these are impossible. Finally, as an independent investigator, I was fortunate to meet smart and dedicated colleagues with whom I share common beliefs and we truly race as one entity. And that makes my everyday life in the lab a true privilege. Now, as an independent investigator, the single and most relevant contribution to science that came from our work is in the field of mechanotransduction that study how cells read and adapt to physical cues. Now, a myriad of mechanical forces operate in a living body. And we are aware, of course, of only of some, the macroscopic one, a muscle flexing, you know, Religion. gravity, the heart pumping, and so forth. Yet physical forces are profoundly affecting each individual cells of the human body at the microscopic level for every second of that cell life. Now, over the past decades, pioneering scientists have shown how powerful these forces can be. Cells decide to proliferate or not, to live or die, or a stem cell to become one cell type or another, depending, in fact, on mechanical forces. But there was something fundamentally missing in this picture that is to do all that mechanical forces has to affect the core of the cell, which is the genome, to turn off or on a number of other genes. Now, what is the link between the physical and the biological world? So we discovered that two highly similar molecules that serve as mechanical switches realize this connection. These molecules are named YAPTAs, and when are activated, they enter the cell nucleus and orchestrate the activity of other genes. Together with many other scientists around the world, we contributed to the view that these mechanical switches are potent drivers of health and disease. 
their level has to be just right for proper tissue regeneration. Too little translates in a failure to heal and too much carries the risk of tumor development. And in this vein, we contributed to an unconventional view of cancer that this is not just you know, an accumulation of genetic disorders, but it's also require a diversion from normal cell mechanics to turn normal cells into malignant one. Now, overall, these studies have contributed to a new flow of research in modern mechanobiology and often in new ways to understanding classic aspects of tissue physiology and pathology from genetic diseases, fibrosis, cardiovascular, cancer, and metastasis. Now, the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle considered shape the soul of living entities. As we refine our understanding of the power of cell shape, tissue shape, and organ shape, we may be able to use it to help people. And this is our belief and our mission. With this in mind, I hope to contribute to the life of the Pontificia Academia with all my strength. Thank you so much.